And so let us stand, my brothers and sisters, for today is the day that the Lord is going to complete some work within you, and his work is the work that he came to do in this world. But he left some of it for all of us to do, as St. Paul says, uh, even the sufferings that, that were lacking, he said, in the cross were there for us to do. And sufferings are not a bad thing. Sufferings are an act of love, an act of gift of self. And so why don't we turn towards each other today and show some form of love by acknowledging those who are around us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And we just ask the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one that we often don't think of, the, of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit's quiet, a very quiet, unassuming in a sense, almost. And yet, he is the one who does kind of all the work within us. And we heard even when Jesus walked in our flesh as a human being, both divine and human, in that humanness, the Holy Spirit worked through him and, and, uh, and uh, directed him in his life, where to go, how to respond, even into the desert sometimes. And sometimes we think that's terrible, all the things that, that we have to go through in this world. But if the Holy Spirit's with us, it's amazing. There are things he's doing, and sometimes we don't know. And so one of the things that we do in response of not knowing is we sometimes turn to sin and we turn away from what the Holy Spirit's asking of us. So let us first prepare ourselves by acknowledging our sins. And so preparing ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away sins of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy on us glory to god glory to god glory 
to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit, coming near and dwelling graciously within us, may make of us a perfect temple of his glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated now as we listen to the word and let the spirit penetrate our hearts. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you back to your own soil. I will sprinkle clean water over you to make you clean. From all your impurities and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you so that you walk in my statutes, observe my ordinances, and keep them. You will live in the land I gave to your ancestors. You will be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Please. 
sing to him, I find my joy in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Therefore I tell you that nobody speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be accursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom, to another the expression of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another mighty deeds to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another varieties of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them evenly to each person as he wishes. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and for all parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to ask at this time all the candidates for confirmation to please stand. All confirmation candidates. Father, I am pleased to present to you the candidates from our St. Andrew Parish. Deacon Doug, have they been prepared and are they ready to receive this sacrament? These candidates have prepared for confirmation by participating in the sacramental life of the church by meditating on the Word of God, by attending religion classes, by participating in a retreat and other activities, and by demonstrating Christian service. They have found great strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayer and example. Now they ask to be confirmed, and after consultation with their teachers and parents, I testify that they are ready. So now I'm going to ask the sponsors to please stand beside them. Candidates, remain standing. My dear sponsors, the Christian life and the demands that flow from the sacraments are not to be taken lightly. Therefore, before granting these candidates their request to receive the sacrament of confirmation, it is important that the Church also hear the testimony of their sponsors who have journeyed with them. And so I ask you today, All the sponsors, are these candidates ready to be confirmed? And so now I turn to the assembly of all of us who are here, and I ask you, my brothers and sisters, the rest, are these, should these, our brothers and sisters, be confirmed today? I think we could do better than that. (laughs) I ask you, my brothers and sisters in the assembly, should these brothers and sisters of ours be confirmed today? Yes. There we go. And so why don't we make that confirmation? And so you may be seated. Oh, sorry, wait a minute. I got to ask the candidates. Oh, boy, that would be bad for me not to ask you guys. My dear candidates, our staff, sponsors, families, and fellow parishioners have just testified before everyone on your behalf. And so I ask you, and your response to this is, I am. Are you ready now to receive the sacrament of confirmation? Oh, come on. They were so much better. You guys, one more time, let them know how excited you are about this. Are you ready now to receive the sacrament of confirmation? There we go. Okay, bless the Lord. Now you may be seated. And I'm going to have to ask Deacon Doug. He stole my homily there, so I'm going to need this one. It's got my homily in it. Today we celebrate something amazing. Thirteen years ago, for most of you, some of you right here uh, were baptized, and you were, you know, yay big. And you didn't know what was happening that day. You had no clue. And your mom and dad did, and they were asking on your behalf, they were asking on your behalf that God would send forth his spirit and receive you in baptism. In a certain way, they were, repre- they were representing the Lord, who on that day did something that happened way before we understood what was happening. He gave everything for us, and we were, we were putting him on the cross. We were saying, well, we don't even want you. You go away. And there he was giving everything for us. We, had, we were clueless. That day when you were in the baptismal font, you were clueless. You didn't know what was going on unless God gave some great grace, maybe. I mean, that could happen. But normally that doesn't. So your parents asked on your behalf that you receive. Today is actually the fulfillment of that day. Today's the day now you're at an age where I can say, I want this. It doesn't mean I co- totally understand it, but I can say two things. One, this is God's voice. And two, yes. And we remember somebody who did that. 
And she had no idea what that yes was going to be and what it was going to lead to. She didn't know that one day she'd be right here at the foot watching her son pass. But because she said yes on that day, God took a lifetime with her, 33 years, to prepare her for that day. And she was ready. And so you do not know what's coming, but you do know that God has asked you and you have said yes today. You're going to say yes today and he is going to impart his spirit upon you. And we know about all that. We heard about some of the, the, the gifts. We have two things, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So who can rattle off all the gifts? No, I'm teasing. I'm not going to put you under that spot. Bishop might do that, but I won't. So what? Somebody throw out one gift. One, two, we heard actually uh, two of the gifts today spoken by Hannah when she was presenting the word to us. Anybody remember t any one gift of the Holy Spirit? Just one? Wisdom. There we go. The first one. Wisdom. I'm going to start with a second. Understanding. What does that mean? Again, there's lots of things we could understand, lots of worldly things, and they're real important. They could, they, somebody had to understand a lot to be able to build this place. They, you know, they had to have engineering skills. They had to have uh, arithmetic skills, uh, th some physics. They had to put it all together. Otherwise, this place would be falling down on us if they didn't have those skills. So those are important skills for us today. Really important. But these skills, the understanding that we're talking about is e even deeper because this place will come down eventually. It's not going to last forever. But this, the understanding we're talking about is the understanding of the faith. An understanding that helps us to see all of this within the bigger picture. See, we tend towards a myopic vision of things. Myopic meaning narrow, can't see beyond, or narrow-minded, narrow, narrow uh, focused. And that narrow focus is the world, and for me, it's my life in the world with all of the experiences that I'm going through. And unless I attempt to expand it by finding what others are going through around me, I can really stay right there in that little world and be happy if, or sad. It does, you know, it could be either way, but I am often myopic, just seeing the world here in an earthly sense. You know, when the astronauts went up to the moon, 24 of them were up there, all of them all talked about the fact that, wow, they looked back at the world, and it was really, like they said, they, uh, I think it was uh, um, Jim Lovell, you know, used his thumb, if you watch uh, Apollo 13, and just put the earth and behind his thumb. And then they looked out into the great blackness of the hugeness of space and they said that little marble is really not that big. It's very small compared to all things. And it was that helped them to say, whoa, there's more going on. And so what the gift of understanding is, is to see the beyond, to put everything in the context. And that's what our faith teaches us. Bit by bit, we start to get it a little more. Even I don't have it all. Nobody in the world does. The Holy Spirit starts to give us a little more. And wisdom is actually the gift of putting it in that right order. Okay, how does building this building compare in goodness to building up the kingdom of heaven in my heart? Which one is more important? What, which one takes priority? And so it's making sure that I put what's in priority first, the kingdom of heaven, then the good things on earth. They're both good, but they are not both equally good. Because again, this is falling down. This is coming down. But the kingdom I build in here and help build in other hearts is going to last forever. So counsel is that gift to, especially in a difficult circumstances where I have to make a decision between the good of earth and the good of the kingdom. Or, I mean, easier, uh, an evil, something that destroys one or other of the goods. That counsel is how do I apply how do I apply wisdom and understanding in this circumstance? Fortitude is the strength to do it. Yes, I will. And maybe she knew. Maybe she knew more than we know what she was saying yes to. Maybe she was, I mean, in fact, not very long after that, Simeon was the one that came and said, and a sword will pierce your heart. A sword will pierce your heart. So she knew. She had fortitude. Knowledge of this, uh, when what knowledge is, is a relational gift. It's not just, again, understanding is about understanding things. Knowledge is about knowing others. 
starting with God. And it's the Holy Spirit, again, that gives us that gift to know God. What does the Holy Spirit primarily do? Tell you to know Him, to know the Son, to know Jesus. That's the primary work of the Holy Spirit. And some, many of you talked about, when I was reading your letters, adoration. When we put Jesus out here, in the days that you were here, and then on our retreat, and the amazing thing that happened to your heart, and you can't even explain it, and I can't explain when God does things like that to me either, but I said, I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what's going on, but something is real here. That's the recognition of Jesus in the sacrament. And who is the one doing it in your heart? It's the Holy Spirit. So he's already working with you, and today he's saying, I'm going to even pour out more of myself on them. And so now when I start to know the Lord and know others and know myself in context with all things, then I have piety. What is piety? You might think it's you know, just being like a monk or a nun and praying all day and just being on my knees and being real pious. Well, yeah, of course, that's one form of it. Piety is simply seeing everything in that context, is able to see God and creation for what they are. Even to see myself for what I am. I am not what I do. I am not what I'm going to do. There'd be a lot of good things. I could build a building like this. I am what God did. That's what I am. I'm what God did. I wasn't, I didn't think about what I was going to be before I became. He did that. And now I am able to see, even with piety, the beauty that I am in that context. And so the last one is fear of the Lord. And that sounds like a scary one. What am I supposed to be afraid I'm going to go to hell if I don't, if I keep doing bad? Well, that's kind of a good thing to think, you know. We do want to not do bad, and we do want to not turn away from God, but that's not the fullness of fear. The fear of God is just like this. If we think about it with your parents, you know, when you were young and you were afraid you were going to get punished, that's a certain fear. But then as you grew older, or hopefully you're growing into this, I don't want to hurt mom and dad because I see how much they love me. And I don't want to offend that. I want to love them in return. The fear to offend, the fear to hurt someone that I love, that's the true fear of God. So those are the gifts that God gives. He's going to give out more today, but it's just like anything else. If I don't use a gift, if I don't exercise, if I don't you know, play around with that gift and, and understand that gift and look into that gift and try to pierce the mysteries of that gift, it's not going to grow. My use of it is not going to get proficient unless I use these gifts. And so one of the ways we know, again, that we are utilizing the gifts well, we hear is the, are the fruits of the Spirit. Charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Long-suffering. Again, remembering suffering is the desire to love another even at the cost that will come. Gentleness, faith, modesty, self-control, chastity. I don't know about any of you, but looking around in the world today, we see sometimes not a lot of that going on. And, and there's self-control is maybe where people are losing it, losing that self-control. And anybody in the room kind of a little worried about what you're seeing in the world today? Anybody? I am. Just a little, just a teeny tad. And yet, what did we hear in the gospel today? What was the first thing we heard? On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear, for fear, of the Jews, which meant that, you know, they were living within Israel, so that was the people around them. Jesus came to them and stood in their midst and said, peace be with you. Peace. So that's not just an absence of war, peace, because some of these disciples would go off and give their lives. In fact, a lot of them, all 11 of the 12, would go off and give their lives for the Lord. So what is the Jesus talking about? What kind of peace is he talking about when, we, when he's saying, my peace I give you? Not as the world gives you, but my peace I give you. Well, it has to do with something else he did. 
because he said, when he said this, peace be with you, he showed them his hands and his side. What were in his hands and his side? Wounds. Wounds. Wounds that were put there by us, by others. And yet he said, peace be with you. And then he showed them his wounds. So that's a very, very uh, uh, amazing reality that you now are able to start grasping, and you're going to even grasp it more when the Spirit comes upon you. And then he says to them, what's, what does he say? Receive the Holy Spirit. And the first act he says to do is, can anybody remember that? First act he says, receive the Holy Spirit. It's not one of the ones we just went through. Forgive. This is now a gift that you give. That the Holy God has given you all these gifts. He's poured them out on you, and now he's going to ask you, listen to the word, forgive. Give. A gift from you to others. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. So you're given a, a gift of peace. That is peace beyond what the world would understand as peace, meaning I can stand in the midst of a war and still have it. Everybody can be going crazy around me and I could still have this peace. It is unexplainable except that I can see something beyond all of this that brings it all into context, that somehow just gives me a peace within it. It's not that I don't care. It's that I see something that maybe the others around me don't see right now. And so that's the gift. And then the first work is to forgive. If you can do these two, you have the power to end wars, the power to win hearts, the power to crush the devil and his efforts because he wants to beshevel. The devil wants to beshevel everything. You have the power to change the whole world with peace and forgiveness. And where does it start? It doesn't start in a career and the thing that you're going to do. Those are going to be, again, it's important to have a career, important to have skills, tasks that you're going to be working on. It starts in your vocation, the call. And that's, that first one was right there, and you're completing that today. The call to be God's first in the midst of the world for the sake of the world. If you don't allow that uh, call to grow within you, the world's in trouble. We'll keep on spiraling down into that myopic, more and more myopic vision. And so then it goes from there into the call to marriage. Most of you will be called to be married and then have children. And so within that context, you will exercise, you will try, and mom and dad are uh, trying very hard around you, peace and forgiveness. I mean, you, none of you would be able to tell me that, that if you have not, if you've seen mom and dad forgive each other for something that was like way out of line, they made a little mistake in the way they spoke to each other, but yet they came to each other and forgave each other, that that gives you a vision that goes beyond mom and dad. That gives you a vision of God. If, ooh, if they can forgive each other, then I'm forgivable. I'm for, even though I did that, yes, I'm forgivable. And so that is the gift that you will give in your vocation. And it may be marriage. You may be called to be a husband, a wife, a father, and a mother. You may be called to be a priest. And what do I do? What's one of the most important works that I do is to give God's forgiveness. And yet, I'm a man too. I'm a human. So I truly have to, I don't, I have to forgive others who offend me. I have to give my forgiveness. And I've got lots of children, about 4,500 children. And so there's times when, when I just like a, they have to see me being able to forgive, to live that peace. And then you may be called to be a brother or a sister in the world, to be God's alone, consecrated, set aside, to give us, to give all, everybody around us that, that image of what we're going to see in heaven and to give us the image of what true love of God is. And look at right, we're seeing love right now in action. That's what you're called to. You're called to, to help those who are wounded. You're called to help, and the only way you're going to be able to help those who are wounded is yourself. Be able to handle the wounds and forgive 
the others who gave, gave them to you. So I think these, these readings were actually very, very good. Now, last thing I want to say is to you again, let's go back to what we heard, or what I heard from you. Adoration. The Lord did something in my heart, and I don't know what it is. He's going to do it again right now with his, with his spirit, and I'm not sure how it's going to happen. He's going to do most of the work. I don't really have to do anything except, yes, I do. I am. And he's going to take off and do it. On Thursday, August 6th, we're going to have our adoration again, our big hour adoration with praise and worship music. And I invite all of you to come back because uh, many of you talked about how powerful that was. And I know that in this COVID stuff, we've not been able to do, to do too much. But come and it spread out. There's lots of room. Bring your family. Because Hannah Bondi, who just read for us, she's going to give a testimony. And she was a big fish for all of you. She, she's going to give a testimony of how the Spirit's been working in her heart. She's ready to go off to Grand Valley State and to take the big vision to the world there. And her, wherever she is, she's going to try to take that big vision to the world. So I invite all of you to come back on August 6, 7 p.m. For our, for our monthly first Thursday holy hour. And listen to Hannah uh, as she allows us to hear what the Spirit has done through her. And now let us prepare so that someday we will be the one who can come up here and tell everybody what the Spirit has done through us. I'm going to ask the candidates again to please rise. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life through his resurrection. And so let us renew the promises of, the holy, of our holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so now I ask everybody to stand with our candidates. And I ask all to respond. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the whole church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to ask all to sit except for the candidates again. My dear friends, in baptism, God our Father gave you new birth, the birth of eternal life to his chosen, and made, him, made you his chosen sons and daughters. Let us pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit to strengthen his sons and daughters with his gifts and anoint them with, to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and of courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Now you may be seated as we prepare for anointing you in the Spirit. I didn't have my mic on. We just confirmed Margaret of Cortano. And so now we start with who's next? All right. Oh, yeah. There we go. I got to stand back. Maria Goretti, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. John the Baptist, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Francis of Assisi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Father, may I present Matthew. Matthew, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. <laughs> All right. Father, may I present Luke? I always like Luke's because I can say, Luke, I'm your father. Sorry, I should have done that. Luke, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The, Lord, the peace be with you. And with your spirit. Green spot. St. Patrick, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Father, may I present to you Sebastian. Sebastian, be 
Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Rita of Cassia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Gregory, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Bernadette, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. John Henry Newman, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Jude, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Lawrence, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. All right. That's all of them the Lord has done so well. You know, the one thing that I didn't get to do, uh, because we didn't have the bishop today, oh, of course it was, I didn't get to shake your hand, but I didn't get to give you a little smackaroonie either. Do you know that's part of the, the actual rite? And he actually gives the ladies just a nice tap, and the boys get a little more of a smack. But we couldn't do that today because of COVID restrictions. So you are still sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. So do we have a prayer? We do peace? Because I'm not the bishop. I don't remember how all this goes. So let us stand on the house one another with the sign of peace. My dear friends and my dear brothers and sisters, the reason I, that I, it was teasing, but the reason for the little smack is a real, the church wants us to, to basically, it says, wake up, wake up. You're now more called to do more things for more people. And the Lord starts that. So immediately what we do, what we do to start that is we now offer prayers. And your prayers are going to be much, in a certain sense, even more powerful now because the Spirit is within you. And so these prayers are real and are really heard. They're not just recited, just to recite. And so let us recite them with the whole of the church for all of our brothers and sisters in great need. For these sons and daughters of God, confirmed by the gift of the Spirit, that they give witness to Christ by lives built on faith and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and godparents who led them in faith, that by word and example, they may always encourage them to follow the way of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, in union with Francis our Pope, Earl our Bishop, and all the bishops, that God who gathers us together by the Holy Spirit may help us grow in unity of faith and love until his, his Son returns in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people of every race and nation, that they may acknowledge the one God as Father, and in the bond of common brotherhood seek his kingdom, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died with the promises of God's covenant written in their hearts, especially family members of our Contramandi, that they may obtain their heavenly reward, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, and that we also continue to pray as we've been praying as a church for to our mother in heaven who is there with her son at his side and advocates for us in all things. And we, so we've been praying to her as a parish that we be separated from this virus that is at- attacking the flesh of our, of our brothers and sisters in the world and also the virus that we spoke of that's attacking our hearts. It's attacking the hearts of people in the world. And so we ask her help. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father in heaven, your spirit is more present in the world now and our brothers and sisters. In these days that they have received him from now until they are with you in the kingdom, many new things are prepared already for them they do not yet know. Help them to accept, just like they did today, your outpouring so that they can be strengthened and have fortitude as they go into a world that needs you and needs them. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us be seated now as we prepare our altar. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive in your mercy, Lord, the prayers of your servants and grant that being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand. He poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for all and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, 
crying out as we acclaim. be seated. And now we are going to witness the greatest act that ever was done on earth, the act of forgiveness that started with us, for us, and the baptism continues now through our confirmation and will continue now to spread out through the world through us and without which nothing else really matters. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Andrew and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, Carl, our Bishop Emeritus, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also, Lord, your servants, reborn in baptism, whom you have been pleased to confirm by bestowing the Holy Spirit, and in your mercy keep safe in them your grace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And let us stand, my brothers and sisters. And at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Rejoice in the Lord, all you who have been enlightened, who have tasted the gift from heaven, and have been made sharers in the Holy Spirit. We're going to go ahead and say a prayer, hoping that we got up online and that there are those with us who couldn't be here, but are with us in spirit. And so we pray with you a spiritual communion. At your feet, O my Jesus, I prostrate myself and offer you the repentance of my contrite heart as it plunges plunges itself in its own nothingness and in your holy presence. I adore you in the sacrament of your love. I desire to receive you in the poor dwelling that my heart offers you. As I await the happiness of sacramental communion, I want to possess you in spirit. Come to me, O my Jesus, that I may come to you. May your love inflame my whole being for life and for death. I believe in you. I hope in you. I love you. So shall it be. For the distribution, Father and I and our Eucharistic uh, ministers will don our masks and we'll wash our hands, and then we will come out to you row by row. At the end of each row, we will say, Body of Christ, you will respond, Amen, and then you will remove your masks, and then we will come by and you will receive Christ. After you receive, we ask that you put your mask back on and either kneel or be seated so that we make sure we get everybody. If you are not receiving, we ask that you just put your arms crossed over your chest and you will receive a blessing. And if anyone has a specific low uh, gluten intolerance, we do have low gluten hosts. And just let us know that when we approach.
My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed with the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. I am small. Let us pray. God, our Father, complete the work you have begun and keep the gifts of the Holy Spirit active in the hearts of your people. Make them ready to live his gospel and eager to do his will. May they never be ashamed to proclaim to all the world Christ crucified living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. One, when we leave, we're going to ask you all to stay, and then you'll be ushered out one at a time from the back to kind of keep the social distancing. Uh, I'll, it, we, we can take pictures outside. That's really nice. It's going to be a little warm out there today, but is there's some nice spots over there if you want to do some pictures with the family. Um, and can't remember any thing else except let's again thank the Holy Spirit and these kids for allowing him, these young men and women, for allowing him to come upon them and through them, us. Let us thank them. <laughs> and let us thank Janet Cook and Julia Kimshis who do so much work to make all of this happen there in the back over there. And we can't do enough thanking our God who just pours out himself liberal. He's, it's, we, if, you're, if you want to be a liberal or Democrat, doesn't matter, I think, or liberal or a conservative, I think we are all liberal and conservative in some way about some things. But one thing the Holy God is not conservative about is pouring out his spirit. He, is, he pours out as much as you will to receive, he will give. So don't forget that the rest of your life because the world needs him. And now you are his ambassador. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Thanks.